All of the 14th generation CPUs from Intel are great across the board, but there are some bad things that I want to mention after we go over the good. So first off, what's new with Raptor Lake? Intel has increased the core counts on all of the CPUs in the lineup. The i9-14900K now has 16 cores and 24 threads. The i7-14700K now has 12 cores and 20 threads. And then the i5-14600K has six cores and 12 threads. Intel has also made some other improvements to the Raptor Lake architecture, such as having Wi-Fi 7, Thunderbolt 5 support, higher clock speeds, improved cache performance, and better support for DDR5 memory. So how do the new 14th generation CPUs actually perform in real life circumstances? Well, in short, they're very fast. The i9-14900K is definitely the fastest CPU on the market right now, and it can handle anything that you throw at it. The i7-14700K and the i5-14600K are also amazing CPUs, and they're a great choice for gamers, streamers, and content creators such as myself. The 14600 and the 14700 are definitely the two CPUs that I see as the best value considering the jump in performance in comparison to the 13th generation CPU lineup, which is something that I loved about the i3-13100. That was the first time that an i3 CPU is something that I would actually recommend to people, whether or not they were gaming or just doing basic tasks on their computer. That thing is definitely not aimed at creators or people that are gonna be using video editors or anything, but the i3 in the 13th generation lineup was actually a decent CPU for people that were just looking to, you know, build a lower end computer. So as far as the bad stuff, I know that a lot of people are throwing stones at Intel right now, but hopping off of that train and looking at it from a different perspective, leaving the drama aside, the only cons that I see about these new CPUs would be for current 13th generation CPU owners. And that is just because there's not really a reason to upgrade to these unless you have something less than an i5-13400, which even then you don't necessarily have to upgrade to the 14th generation lineup. And to be completely fair, any time that you get a lower end chip, a lower end GPU, lower end motherboard, or if we apply it to something in actual real life, a lower end car, it applies to everything. If it is a lower end product, you're going to need to upgrade that sooner than if you were to get something higher end, which is meant to future proof you. The 14600 and the 14700 are, are definitely still as far as like mid-range CPUs go, those are still taking the lead in comparison to Ryzen. And now I, I love both companies. I'm not like, I love having competition. I just personally like Intel because of the features that they offer for content creators and influencers such as myself and or people working from home. Just using a couple things as example, OBS Studio for recording and streaming. There's some Intel optimizations for OBS. Video editors, the same thing. The same thing with photo editors and a lot of the Adobe programs that you're running on your computer. All of the new AI stuff that's releasing nowadays, the 3D applications, you know, like Blender, Cinema 4D, et cetera. All of the Microsoft applications for working from home and that kind of stuff. AMD is still aimed at gamers and that's awesome. That's what AMD is focusing on. That's what their company is pretty much based around if you ask me personally, with the exception of the Ryzen 9 processors. So yes, they're 7950 and 7950X, 7900. Yes, yeah, so like the Ryzen 9, those are definitely aimed at everything across the board and they're, they're absolutely great. Um, but it's just either way the only reason i'm explaining this is it is nice to have competition between the two but until amd starts offering stuff like for the creative side i'm just gonna i'm gonna personally stick with intel because of that now if you're gaming i still i honestly think that amd is definitely the way to go it, in 2023 um i do think that so which cpu is the best it really comes down to what you want and what you are looking for. Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I hate saying it as much as you probably hate me saying it, but if I do not say it, like 1% of you will actually do it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff.